Hey guys, this is Gavin from Health and Performance and our assistant today, Billy Frost. This is part two um, of how to address shoulder pain or bicep pain after squatting. In part one, we showed you some uh, ideas and some things, techniques you can use to alleviate the acute symptoms to get you through that portion of the training uh, that you're injured in. Um, like we said in part one, they can be really, really effective. However, it's not gonna fix the underlying issue. So in part two, we're gonna be showing you now the, uh, the most common reason people end up with this sort of, uh, sort of pain in the first place. Okay, so whenever I see people coming in um, to see me as a, either the coach or a therapeutic uh, aspect of the rehab professional, one of the things I'm gonna get them to do is show them not just like where does it hurt, but how are you performing the squat? How are you getting under the bar? Now invariably what tends to happen is we see something like this. So Billy's gonna get under the bar. Now rack the bar. Good. And what I see often is people trying to bring their hands too close, too, too close together. Yep. And we're not seeing a huge amount of back tightness through here. We didn't see, really see sort of Billy setting things up in her back to take the load on the back. So what that's going to do invariably is put a lot of load into the front of the shoulder and also into the elbows through here. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to get Billy to rank that up. With this kind of setup, we're going to show you sort of the, I guess, a better way to, to do that in just a moment. With this kind of setup, very often people are bringing their hands uh, very, very close together. And what they're doing is they feel tight, but they're achieving what I would think of as, as passive tightness. Okay. So with that passive tightness, it's basically just scrunching everything together and tensing and just hoping that it kind of works out well. Okay. What we're going to run through now is how to create active tightness in the back all right so first thing we look at is is hand width so like I said often people bring their hands too close together what we need to think about with hand width uh, on the squat is what's the ideal distance apart in the hands to get uh, good lat recruitment so the lats are going to play a key part in stabilizing as a global stabilizer of the shoulder all right so one thing we do here then is simply think about putting your your hand on your dominant lat bring that hand in as close as you can try and squeeze your lat as much as possible yeah then we're going to go to the other extreme we're going to take it probably too far away and again we're just going to try and squeeze the lat and then we're going to come in around midpoint and most people around that sort of midpoint somewhere are going to find they can really recruit their lat a lot more than either too close or too far away. With Billy then we're going to get our hands we found out already for Billy this is the ideal sort of distance apart so she's going to take her hands here she's going to take a firm grip on the bar um, see how she's got a thumb underneath yeah she's got a thumb underneath and her pinky finger is over the top of the bar now there are definitely situations where Someone may need to bring their, bring their thumb over the top of the bar, run under the bar, and, and or have their pinky finger under the bar, yeah? So both of these, I'm not gonna say they're wrong by any means, certainly not necessarily gonna lead to a bad squat, but they are compensation mechanisms, okay? Often we see that pinky come under the bar because it actually frees up the shoulder, yeah? I don't, I, can, I try and avoid that if I can because uh, to my understanding around 70% of our grip strength can actually come from that pinky finger, okay? So getting the pinky over the top of the bar, the thumb under allows us to take a firm grip on the bar so we can really squeeze that bar in tight. Next thing we look at getting under the bar is we're gonna start thinking about going in horizontally under the bar. So Billy's gonna go in there. She's going head first horizontally. She's squeezing the shoulder blades together. Feet are under the bar. And then from here, she's gonna think about getting her hips under the bar and rotating or pivoting around the bar there. Now she's a bit off center here, but you can get the idea. So by doing this, what happens is we start getting the shoulder blades pulled in together and we start getting some depression of that scapula, okay? From here, she's gonna think about pulling the collarbone into the bar. That's really gonna help engage the upper back. And then from there, we're gonna recruit the, the lats. So we're gonna try and engage and squeeze the lats through here. Now be let's just unbreak the bar from there. Cool. So compared to the, uh, the, the previous position then, we can see a lot more sort of muscle recruitment through the traps here. Def definitely these lats are on a lot harder and we can see some, some muscle activation through the mid back in here. Okay. So I'm going to get Billy to rank that up again. And we'll, we'll run through that one more time. Yep. So 
Often people say to me, oh, where should my elbows be? Should they be under the bar? Should, be, they, be, should they be back or, or higher up? I'm not too worried about where the elbows actually go. I'm more worried about where the scapula is going and also um, what's happening in the lats because that's really going to dictate to a large degree where the elbow goes. Okay, now really high up probably isn't great. Really low down under the bar can work for some people, but as a general starting point, it's probably not a great starting point either. So Billy's going to go in again. She's going to take a firm grip on the bar. So we're really looking at pulling the shoulder blades in together, pivoting around the bar because that's going to help facilitate um, depression of the scapula. He's always going to actively depress the scapula by recruiting the lats. So the lats act as a depressor of the scapula there. And he's going to pull that collarbone back into the bar. That's going to help with thoracic extension and help her get tall. And then he's going to unrack from there. Great. So you can see here now compared to before, again, we've got uh, traps, rear delts, mid traps, lats are engaged. We can see here compared to the very first time she unracked, She's getting a lot more of that load in uh, supported by her back now, yeah? We're not getting nearly as much load supported uh, by the arms or elbows. There's a lot more load in the back, freeing up the elbows and the arms, where a lot of these issues really stem from. Okay, thanks Billy, you can wrap that up, that's good. When we look at the underlying issue of, of what's going on here, um, with the, uh, the, the bicep or upper arm pain when squatting through that brachialis, it's gonna be either, or combination of, not getting set up correctly on the bar, taking too much load in the arms, not enough in the back. Just by using some of the ideas we've gone through here, that's really gonna help you um, take more load in the back rather than the arms. It can also come from not actually having the mobility, which we're gonna get onto now and, and expand on in part three. If you just simply don't have the mobility to get into the uh, better position, that's gonna hamper your efforts as well. And again, that can end up with you taking a lot of load in the, in the, in the arms or having to adjust your, your grip width, um, which is gonna affect how much tightness and tension you can build in the back. Another th uh, component as well is sometimes we just don't have the tissue tolerance. Um, so uh, when we think about going to heavy squats, one rep max type efforts, that's a lot of load even though we're taking the load in the back, it's still gonna be a lot of load that the arms are gonna support as well. So if you simply aren't strong enough through the brachialis, through the uh, radio brachialis there, we ha don't have enough sort of, I guess, tissue tolerance to support the load as well. So we're gonna get onto that in, in part four, uh, when we start talking about what can we do to train, in our training, sorry, to, to, to improve this and make this better, yeah? So Let's get Billy under the bar again. I'm just gonna run through some of the mobility requirements and then we'll expand on this in, in part three, okay? Let's get you under the bar again, Billy. So set up yourself up correctly as you normally do. To get set up properly in the squat with the upper body, we need sufficient thoracic extension. We also need optimal amount of external rotation. So basically her hand here is pretty much behind her shoulder when we look at this, yeah? So that requires external rotation at the shoulder. We also need internal rotation at the shoulder to allow us to come and grip, like turn the hand around and hold that bar nice and tight. And then we need adequate shoulder extension because that elbow is coming behind the shoulder, which is extension. Okay, so if you struggle with any of these components, you're basically just gonna have a tough time getting in to this, this better position anyway and loading the bar on your back better. Now, come and join us in part three and we're gonna run through each of these components, how you can do a little test for yourself at home on which area is holding you back and how to address that.